Hey guys, it's Misty from The Book Rat, and it's time for the next episode of my bookshelf tour. It's been a while since we looked at the last shelf, so it's definitely time to move on. We are taking a look today at the second shelf of green books. If you're unfamiliar with my bookshelf tour, you can check out the overview here and catch up on all the other episodes. Basically, I organize my books according to the color on the spine, and to give you guys a deeper peek into the shelves, each shelf is getting its own video. You are watching the long version in which I talk about the books, how I got them, what I think, if I've read them. If you want to watch the short version, you can check that out here. But if you're sticking with this one, settle in, and I'm gonna get into it. Alright, so there is the second shelf of green books. In this first little corner, you'll see I have some overflow books stacked. I think I've probably got some more too. Haven't made it back onto the shelves yet or loaned out at this moment, but I'll go ahead and show you those first. We have The Last Dragon Slayer by Jasper Ford. This was a present from Liz of Consumed by Books. I haven't read it yet, but I'm definitely eager for it. I like Jasper Ford, or at least what I've read of him. The Near Witch by Victoria Schwab, which you would never expect to be on the green shelf, judging by this cover, because it's <laughs> blue. Um, but it is. It's definitely green, and it wraps around green actually. I need to get a finished copy of this one because I really liked it. Mad Apple by Christina Meldrum. You can see this is a William Morris debut award finalist and well deserving of it. I talk about this book a lot and it's very dark, it's very different, um, and that's part of what I love about it. It is definitely very different. It's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I loved it. Strands of Bronze and Gold by Jane Nickerson. This is a historical retelling of the Bluebeard fairy tale. It's set in Antebellum South, and it's really interesting. I think she captured the sort of isolation of the tale really well. And Spindle's End by Robin McKinley. This is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty, I believe. Or Briar Rose, maybe? I think Briar Rose. Um, but anyway, it's a fairy tale retelling. I have not read it yet. I do like Robin McKinley, though, most of the time. Sometimes she can be really hit and miss, but generally I like her. Let's get those out of the way. On top we have some books stacked, too, so I'm going to get those out of there. Just set those to the side for a minute. First up, we have Solace of the Road by Siobhan Dowd. I own a number of books by her and haven't read any of them yet, but I've just heard such excellent things by her that I can never resist. This was kind of a debate where to put it because it's very kind of pink and peach, but the spine has a good green tone, so I went with that. Wench by Dolan Perkins Valdez. I really, really love this cover. Really. It's just beautiful, and I think that's actually how I ended up with it. I don't know what it's about, and I have not read it, but I had to have it, and it has such a pretty spine. Putting Makeup on Dead People by Jen Violi. I love this cover. It's so quirky. I have not read this one yet, which is shameful because I've had it for a while now, so I definitely need to bump this up in the priorities. Mr. Muo's Traveling Couch by Dai CG. This is another one that I bought um, because of the spine. It's just gorgeous. I found this at a dollar store and I couldn't resist. I've heard good things about it too, but I just haven't had a chance. Unland Done by China Mieville. This is something that I'm almost positive I'm really gonna like, but I just haven't had a chance to read it yet. But I love this sort of distressed cover and I really love the spine. Camera does not do it justice. The Year of the Flood by Margaret Atwood. I'm a huge Margaret Atwood fan, and I love this dystopia trilogy that she has. Um, the first book is Oryx and Crake, Year of the Flood is the second book, and Mad Adam is coming out in September, and I cannot wait. Um, but they are companions, so you could start with Year of the Flood if you wanted, but really, really compelling. The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie by Alan Bradley. This is super fun. I love the main character, Flavia, and I love this design. I think this was a book that I actually bought because of the design and because it's that gorgeous apple green color. And it was one of the cases of caving into a cover actually working out really well because I liked it. The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale. This is a retelling of the fairy tale of the Goose Girl and a really good one. I love this version, the hardcover version, because it's got this sort of cracked old painting thing going on, which is really cool. But anyway, if you like fairy tales or sort of middle grade YA, just fun adventure, Goose Girl's really good. All right, so in that gap, I have The Bards of Bone Plain by Patricia McKillop. I've only ever read short stories by her, but I really liked them, so I figured I would go ahead and pick this one up. 
And I like the artwork. I can't remember the person who does these super, super detailed pieces of art that are on a number of covers that I have. Um, but whoever it is, I like it. Darkwood by M.E. Breen. This is going to be the shelf of buying things for cover appeal because this is another one that I bought because I just, I loved the cover. And I know you can't really tell too much. The camera doesn't pick up a lot of the awesome detail because it just looks really dark. Um, but it's such a cool interesting dark cover and I like that. I haven't read it. I think it's sort of fairy tale esque adventure middle grade. But I'm definitely looking forward to it. And The Thorn in the Blossom by Theodora Goss. I have shown this one before and it is awesome. I'm gonna put the camera back up for a minute so I can show you guys this one in a little more detail. So if you haven't seen The Thorn in the Blossom in person you need to do so and here is why. This is actually a slip cover. This is the book, and it's two-sided, and it's printed accordion style. It's super neat. So basically, you pick a side, and you start reading. When you get to the end, close the book, flip it over, and read the other side. And you're getting two sides of the same story and sort of how they interconnect. And it's a really, really interesting platform. So if you get a chance to play with that, you definitely should. It's really cool. Under the Lilacs by Louisa May Alcott. I am a big fan of Alcott, and I went through a phase where I had to own, like, everything that she had ever written, so this was one of them. It's not my favorite by her, but I did really like it. If You Follow Me by Melina Watros. A while back, this book just took over my brain, and I had to have it. I haven't read it yet, but I'm almost positive I'm going to like it, and I really like this sort of line-drawing style of the cover. House of Many Ways by Diana Wynne-Jones. This is the sequel to Howl's Moving Castle, which I haven't read yet, but when Borders was closing, I found this for less than a dollar, so I had to pick it up. And I do own Howl's. The Heart of the Matter by Graham Greene. If I find a classic really cheap anywhere, I'm, it's pretty much a guarantee I'm going to get it, and this was a quarter at my friends of the library book sale. The Never Ending Story, by, which has seen better days. It's really, it's kind of beat up and a little bit swollen. I think I may have read this in the shower when I was like 11 um, because yeah I was so inseparable from my books that I would even read them while taking a shower which was ridiculous but anyway yes I really like this and I mean I think any child of the 80s is probably familiar with the story and loves it. Dragon's Breath by E.D. Baker. I don't remember how I ended up with this one. I didn't realize until I got it that it was actually a sequel. It's the sequel to The Frog Princess. So I haven't read it. If you've read it and know if it can be read on its own, let me know. Granny Torelli Makes Soup by Sharon Creech, because it's Sharon Creech. The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. I've talked about this book many, many times. I love it. I think it's pretty well known, um, but if you haven't read it, I would say you definitely should. Bridge to Terabithia by Katherine Patterson, because OMG the feels. This book <laughs> crushed me as a kid. I just, I had to have it. Anything that is so memorable to you years and years and years later definitely deserves a spot on your bookshelf as far as I'm concerned. Angus, Thongs, and Full Frontal Snogging by Louise Renison, which if you are from the UK where this was originally published, you'll know is actually called Angus, Thongs, and Perfect Snogging, but this is the first Confessions of Georgia Nicholson book, and I've heard that they are endlessly funny, but I have not read this one yet. Cabo Beauty School by Deborah Rodriguez. This, I think, was another cover by. I really, really love the color of the spine. But yeah, it just, I don't know, something about it told me that I had to read it, and yet I haven't. Liar by Justine Larbalestier. This was causing some endless drama when it came out. Um, and I don't just mean because there was a whitewashing issue with the cover, which I actually kind of understood where they were coming from with that. But no, what I'm talking about is that a lot of people love or hate this because the narrator is unreliable. And that's one of those things that some people love and for others it really pushes their buttons and they don't like being kind of left hanging and left in the air. But that was one of the things that absolutely attracted me to this. I had to know what's going on, what's the truth in Liar, and what's what's the deal with this unreliable narrator. So I haven't read it yet, um, but I'm definitely looking forward to it, and I love, love this green. Skin by Roald Dahl. This is a collection of his adult stories, 
If you are a fan of Roald Dahl or were when you were a kid, I think you should definitely look into this, um, just to kind of get that other side of him. Do not, however, pick this up for your children. They're really, really good. If you think you don't like short stories, I would say check out Roald Dahl and check out Ray Bradbury, because I think they'll make you a believer. Lori Moore, too. I think she will. Stacked on top of those, Heart of a Samurai by Margie Prius. This I got at ALA in 2010, and I want to say that it ended up going on to win, um, like, maybe the Newberry or something, but I haven't read it yet. Tender Morsels by Margot Lanigan. I had intended to read this for Fairy Tale Fortnight this year, but just ran out of time. But it's one of those books that I'm almost positive I'm gonna like. It's described as very dark. It's very kind of out there, and Margot Lanigan really pushes her storytelling, you know, form. It was a Prince Honor, and I generally trust the Prince Award for books that I'm gonna like, and I just haven't had time for it. It's one of those things where I think sometimes when I'm positive I'm gonna like a book, I don't feel as much of a rush to get it, which is really weird. But anyway, I've shown this one a number of times because I absolutely adore this cover. And Being Henry David by Cale Armistead. It's a contemporary story about a boy who has amnesia, and it kind of draws from Henry David Thoreau and Walden Pond. I don't know when I will have a chance to read it, but I've heard really good things about it. And in this last stack, Paradise by Toni Morrison. I haven't read this one yet, but I'm a huge Toni Morrison fan. I think she is an absolute master. When I come across her books, especially if I come across a good deal on them, it's a guarantee that it's coming home with me. The Robber Bride by Margaret Atwood. Speaking of women who I think are absolute masters, I've already said that I love Margaret Atwood, so again, when I see a good deal on one of her books, it's a guarantee. The Merlin Conspiracy by Diana Wynne-Jones. You'd think this would be on my purple shelf based on the cover, but it's actually a really green spine because of the dragon. I have not read this one. This was something I bought on a complete whim when I was like 15 or 16, and I'd never heard of Diana Wynne-Jones, and I almost got rid of this a few years ago, and then one of my friends posted on Goodreads about, I think, Dog's Body, maybe, by Diana Wynne-Jones, which is a book that she loves. And so I started looking into it and realized the depth of the fervor people have for Diana Wynne-Jones, so I figured I'd better hang on to it. I haven't read it yet, but one of these days I think I'm going to binge on her writing. Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Barrent. This is a non-fiction account of a murder in New Orleans, and it is fantastic. Some of you may have seen the movie that they did of this a while back, um, and I have too, but I would say read the book. The book is really interesting full of some very interesting characters who turn out to be real people. The Spellman Strike Again by Lisa Lutz. I won this one from Miss Eliza at Strange and Random Happenstance, and she speaks very highly of the Spellman books, so um, I was definitely happy to win, and I have not read it yet, and I'm not sure if I can just start with this one, if they're, you know, companions or anything like that, but um, one of these days, definitely going to give them a try, because we tend to have similar tastes. Arthur and George by Julian Barnes. I read a really good review of this years ago in Book Journal, I want to say. I'm not entirely sure where I read the review now, um, but something about it just called to me and I had to have it. No, I haven't read it yet. The Wastelands by Stephen King. This is the third Dark Tower book, one featuring Blaine, the crazy monotrain. I actually started this series at book four, which was accidental and really random, but it actually kind of worked. I think this one might be my favorite. I don't know, it's a toss-up, and I, I love the whole series, without a doubt. But I really liked this one. I liked the time they spent on Blaine. It felt really tense and important. Though book four, Wizard and Glass, definitely has a soft spot in my heart because it introduced me to this world. But yeah, if you haven't read the Dark Tower series, especially if you like dystopia and you want to read one that's actually damn good. Even if you don't like Stephen King, I think you should pick it up, because I am not a huge Stephen King fan, but I adore The Dark Tower. Song of the Wanderer by Bruce Coville. I was a huge Bruce Coville fan when I was a kid, so I came across this one, I think in one of those scholastic book form things. It was like one of the deals, and I had to have it. And it's book two of the Unicorn Chronicles, which I had not heard of, so I haven't read it and I don't know if you can jump in at this, but it was Bruce Coville and I had to have it. If you're wondering, the book that made me obsessed with him was Goblins in the Castle. And lastly, The Drowned Cities by Paolo Bacigalupi. I 
loved this. I will link my review. It's really, really compelling. I have more books by Paolo. I have a number of them, actually, and really, really want to dig into them. I thought this was pretty damn good. So those were the books on my second green shelf. I do have some more green books, I'm sure, kind of lingering. I'm amazed how many green book spines there actually are. I mean, it was able to fill two shelves completely and have overflow, and I know I have some in the sign shelves and things like that. So I always like it. I like it when there are colorful shelves, especially green, because one of my favorite colors is that sort of chartreuse really strange green that a lot of people either love or hate. As I've been doing with the last few videos, I definitely challenge you to make a response showing off your own green books. You can leave that as a video response below, or if you are on a blog or on Twitter, feel free to just share pictures and tweet them at me or leave a link in the comments. That's all for this video, and I think for our next bookshelf tour, we're going to have a little intermission and I'm going to put the colored shelves on pause and show you something from the shelves behind me, maybe some signed books or some Jane Austen or something. That is all for now and as always, happy reading!